You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Mohammed Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 32 of 2020 appointing Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa as advisor to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, at the rank of Minister. The decree shall be enforced from the date of its issuance and shall be promulgated in the official Gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree of 33 of 2020 appointing Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as the Prime Minister's Court Under Secretary. The decree shall be enforced by His Royal Highness the Premier from the date of its issuance and shall be promulgated in the official Gazette. Upon the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to resume Friday prayers while taking into consideration the necessary precautionary measures to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, announced that upon the ministry's announcement, the practice of Friday prayers only during this phase will be based upon the mandated precautionary regulations. The Minister of Justice affirmed the necessity to implement the precautionary measures set by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, presided by Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. Friday prayers will commence starting June the 5th, and this decision will be periodically reviewed in accordance with the Sharia regulations to protect the health and safety of all. The minister added that the ministry will coordinate with the Sunni and Jafari endowments to prepare mosques for prayers. Transportation and Telecommunications Minister Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed revealed the completion of the first phase of the new Bahrain International Airport expansion project. The minister linked the operational date to the improvement of international conditions for precautionary measures to combat the coronavirus COVID-19 and the end of the August was set as the date for the completion of the second phase. Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed indicated that the project is considered one of the most important strategic projects for the Kingdom of Bahrain, which contributes to the development of all economic sectors and represents Bahrain gateway to the outside world. The minister pointed out that the last project would represent less than 3% of the total project size and emphasized that the airport is considered ready for operation. He explained that the second stage of the new airport was supposed to be completed within a year, but some changes were made that accelerated the end time so that they would be ready at the end of August and the beginning of September. Labor and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamedan announced that the companies and establishments in the private sector have started to pay the salaries of their Bahraini employees for May. The government guaranteed the payment of Bahraini citizens' wages in line with the royal directives to launch financial and economic stimulus packages in support of Bahrainis working in the private sector and ensure that payments of their salaries for April, May and June amid nationwide efforts to combat COVID-19. The minister praised the constant care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the continuous follow-up of the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to provide liquidity to the private sector to withstand the current social and economic repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic. Upon the decision of the Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, assigning the Royal Humanitarian Foundation to form a committee to coordinate efforts and follow up on the disbursement of contributions made to the Fina Khair campaign and upon the directives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the RHF, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the committee has launched the project Your Nourishment at Home in cooperation with the Ministry of Interior to support Bahraini families and individuals affected by the coronavirus. The project was launched in the presence of the Secretary General of the RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, and the Assistant Chief of Public Security for Operations and Training Affairs, Brigadier General Dr. Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. Dr. Sayed expressed thanks to the Interior Minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, for the Ministry's cooperation with the RHF. He hailed the efforts of the Ministry's members and affiliates in ensuring commitment to the precautionary measures to mitigate the spread of COVID 19 and spread the values of community partnership as well as its keenness on supporting those affected by the pandemic in cooperation with municipalities and police directorates through the distribution of meals under the direct supervision of public security. Sheikh Hamad bin Mohammed Al Khalifa affirmed that the Fina Khair campaign has witnessed an excellent response from the community based on its noble goals and values. He also hailed the directives of the Minister of Interior to assess the RHF and its campaign through devising joint work plans. The Fina Khair campaign was launched in light of the directives of His Majesty the King to provide aid for families in need that are registered with the RHF and the Ministry of Labor and Social Development to relieve their financial burdens during these exceptional circumstances. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 4,846 with 5,491 recoveries and 300 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on wa and water on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. Saudi Arabia's recovery numbers continue to increase as it saw a downward trend with its decreasing daily new cases in COVID-19. The kingdom recorded 2,460 new recoveries while it detected only 1,581 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours, according to the health ministry today. A total of 57,013 individuals have recovered so far in Saudi Arabia, while the death toll remained relatively low at 458 fatalities. The kingdom confirmed 81,766 total infection cases so far. However, only 24,295, about 30 percent, are active cases. The United Arab Emirates conducted 36,000 tests over the past 24 hours and detected 638 new coronavirus cases, raising the total to 33,170. The health ministry announced today that 412 individuals have recently recovered, taking the total number of recoveries to 17,097. Meanwhile, an additional two people had previously tested positive for the virus died, raising the relatively low death toll to 260. In other news, Dubai is reopening four beaches and major parks to the public starting today as the Emirate begins easing coronavirus restrictions. The municipality asked everyone to adhere to the coronavirus precautionary measures at all locations. Meanwhile, Emirates Airlines' website enabled the option to book flights out of Dubai to 16 destinations in 12 Arab countries. Starting from July the 1st, the airline's website allowed booking flights to destinations in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, Iraq, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, Lebanon, Jordan and Sudan. However, the airline was keen to emphasize that while it is allowing bookings, the situation remains dynamic and could be subject to change. Oman reported 811 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours, raising the total to 9,820, according to the health ministry today. Most of the new cases are non-Omanis, despite its increasing number. A total of 2,396 people who contracted the virus in the Sultanate have recovered so far, and 40 of those infected have died as of Friday, according to the ministry. Oman announced it would end its lockdown in the Masqat province starting today, including in the capital, and individuals are urged to adhere to preventative measures. Also, 50 50 percent of employees are expected to return to their offices beginning May the 31st. The Lebanese Interior Ministry made it mandatory to wear masks for pedestrians and commuters in public and private vehicles as of today. The, minister, the measure is an additional step to prevent the spread of the coronavirus in the small Mediterranean country. Lebanese policemen ramped up their presence in Beirut, issuing tickets to people who are not complying. As the country eased virus-related restrictions, the Interior and Health Ministries called on people to adhere to preventative measures. But some in Lebanon are looking for more than just protection in the masks, while they are also doubling as fashion state. Some designers are fighting the coronavirus in style by making fashionable masks that are washable and reusable. Russia reported a record increase of 232 coronavirus deaths today as Moscow authorities released mortality figures to dispel allegations they were being manipulated. Health officials reported a total of 4,374 deaths and 387,623 cases, the third highest number of infections in the world under the U.S. and Brazil. New infections were below 9,000 for the sixth day in a row at 8,572 cases, while a total of 159,257 people have recovered. Authorities have predicted a higher death toll in May compared to last month, attributing this to deaths among patients who were hospitalized during the peak of the epidemic several weeks ago. Tokyo will remove shutdown requests on more businesses from June when threat theaters, cinemas, fitness gyms and retailers in the Japanese capital can reopen after a coronavirus state of emergency ended this week. The governor of Tokyo said he is now ready to move to step two of a three-phase roadmap designed to gradually reopen businesses in the city. Prime Minister Shenzo Abe declared an end to a seven-week emergency on Monday, saying the infections have subsided enough to resume social and economic activity under a new normal, requiring physical distancing and other disease prevention measures. Tokyo reported 22 new cases today, triggering concerns of an underlying risk and a possible second wave of infections.
The United States imposed sanctions on two Iranian nuclear officials as it announced it is ending waivers for nations that remain in the Iranian nuclear accord. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo confirmed that Majid Araiz and Amjad Sazgar's pursuant had engaged or attempted to engage in activities that have materially contributed to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. The United States said it will terminate sanction waivers that had allowed Russian, Chinese and European companies to continue work aimed at making at Iranian nuclear sites less prone to be used to develop weapons. The U.S. National Guard were on the streets of Minneapolis today as firefighters continued to tackle blazes as it followed a night of unrest that saw cheering protesters torch a police station that the department abandoned. Three days of violent protests also spread to nearby St. Paul and angry demonstrations flared across the U.S. over the death of George Floyd, a handcuffed man who pleaded for air as a police officer kneeled on his neck. The Minneapolis mayor said National Guard members were being stationed in locations to help stem looting, including banks, grocery stores and pharmacies. Malaysia's former Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad has been ousted from his political party, but he has vowed to challenge the move. The 94-year-old Mahathir, said also, along with his son and three other senior members, were expelled from the Berhasto party on Thursday. The party was split into two camps since intense political wrangling led Mahathir to resign as Prime Minister in February and the king to appoint fellow party member Mohyuddin Yassin as his replacement, despite Mahathir's objection. Mahathir's son has since challenged Mohyuddin as party president in a vote that's been postponed by the coronavirus pandemic. Pop-up protests at shopping centers continued in Hong Kong today, the day after China's National People's Congress voted on imposing a national security law on Hong Kong. At the IFC shopping mall in the busy and expensive central business district, people gathered to chant in the main atrium during lunchtime. Some draped banners over the balconies with slogans including Hong Kong independence, one of the things Beijing and its supporters in Hong Kong say the new law is aimed at suppressing. Police did not attempt to break up the gathering. Hong Kong still has anti-virus social distancing regulations, including a limit of eight people at gatherings, except for some reasons like religious meetings. Kosovo's president today called on the country's political parties to speed up their efforts to vote for a new government after the Constitutional Court decided in favor of his decree on the nomination of a new prime minister. Last month, President Hashim Tachi nominated Abdullah Hoti of the center-right Democratic League of Kosovo, or the LDK, to replace acting Prime Minister Albin Korti of the left-wing Self-Determination Movement Party. Korti claims it is the only party entitled to form a new cabinet after winning more seats in parliament than any other party at the parliamentary elections last year. The party says if it cannot form a new cabinet, the country should hold an early general election. With the coronavirus pandemic still not over yet, the Czech National Museum in Prague has put on display the most visible symbol of the country's response to it, face masks. Amid a lack of any protective gear at the early stages of the outbreak, people across the Czech Republic started to make their own at home. Some of the masks on display have been made by leading local fashion designers. Others show people's creativity during this strange time. One mask is decorated with a map of Prague's public transport network painted by a 15-year-old autistic boy. Another one was made by a wife from a shirt that her husband wore at their wedding showing a typical czech sense of humor a mask includes a velcro opening that makes it possible to have a drink without removing the mask the exhibition is set to expand in the future with donations of masks after people no longer need to use them